I'm the true vine. Yeah, just sit right here in front of this speaker. I am the true vine. Thank you, my brother. Look at this. The Lord said, I'm the true vine. So it means I am the vine is both the wood at the bottom, the leaves, everything. I am all of that. I hear the Spirit saying, you got to let me be all in you and all over you and all through you. Y'all going to say something? All right. Quietness is okay. And my father is the husband man. Now, you know what that means? That means that my father is the gardener. My father is the one that snips it, prunes it, and, and gets it looking like it's supposed to be. In other words, my father, he has tools to... Get at it when something ain't quite right. My father's the husband man. He did not say, just grow your way the way you want to, when you want to. It says that I am the vine. And my father, he is the gardener. And if you've ever seen somebody that has a good garden, they know, they know pretty much everything that's going on in their garden. They come out and see, inspect, oh, we have some uh, bugs that are eating it, so let's put some lime on the bottom. They come out and they look at the leaves and say, hmm, not enough water, too much water. They come out, oh, it's short. They look at it and say, now this cherry tree, this peach tree, this apple tree ain't bringing no fruit. They don't just plant the tree and leave it be. And see, all of those who you think that God just plants you and leaves you be, you are deceived. There's the kingdom of God and then there's the kingdom of heaven. These are not the same. The kingdom of God is God owns every creature on the face of the earth. He owns the cattle of a thousand hills. He owns the hills. He owns the seas. He owns the lake. The kingdom of heaven is what comes not with observation, but shall be in you, the Holy Spirit. And so people, they're simply saying, I'm just living my life. Uh, that's not what God intended for you as a human being. He says, I'm the true vine. My father is the husband man. And every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So the father, whether... And it ain't, I'm going to let God. You don't have to let nothing. Once a tree is planted, tree ain't got no say-so about what the gardener going to do. The gardener come out the house any morning and say, I tell, you know what? I think I'm going to chop it down. Oh, I tell you what. I'm going to hit a few of these branches here. So what the word tells us is that every branch in me that doesn't bear fruit. So it's important as you, you say you're a Christian, you got to bear fruit. You can't just say, I'm a Christian, and there's no fruit. And so many people, they're comfortable with that. I'm a Christian because I go to church. But you got to bear fruit. The devil comes to church. You've got to bear fruit. The first fruit you've got to bear is the fruit of, of, of being in, in the presence of, of the Lord. You have to bear fruit that uh, brings repentance. You do. But you just can't be you. He comes to the tree and say, oh, that's, that's Steve. He just, he just let him be. I love him. Let him just grow. And you're growing all over in the neighbor's yard when a storm comes. You fall on his new truck. you growing all under the fence, all buck wild. you growing weeds and, and, and foxes is hiding up in there and skunks and stuff burrowing up in there and making a house. God be like, uh, a real gardener, he got stuff lined up, she, he or she, lined up in each row. And, and you know what? They can go and they can fertilize and dung it. The angels got it where the skunks, you know, that's where the skunks and all the critters hide. So because he loves you and me, he can't just let you be you. Nobody's doubting that you 
are a Christian. Because Jesus says, I am the vine, which means I'm the whole thing. When you see a grapevine, you call the whole thing. There, I got a grapevine. The whole thing. The leaves, the fruit, the branches. But here's where it gets a little difficult, beloved. He says, if you don't bear fruit, he taketh away. God will prune your life. He'll prune your ministry. He'll prune your family. He'll prune you as far as your job, everything else, if it ain't bearing fruit to him. And see, what the Spirit is saying is I'm pruning now. I'm just not letting everybody grow buck wild. I'm looking and saying, you know, you don't need that no more. Let me cut that off. I'm pruning. Why? Because there are some branches of our lives, of our, in our families, he cut people off. Now, to cut off, you got to meditate on God and ask him what that is to you. He cut people off in, 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 in a whole lot of ways. He cut relationships off. He do. You know, the ones you don't want to. He cut. For a season, he'll cut people out of your life. Don't mean they're gone forever, but he, he has a way where he can come back and say, well, I tell you what now, I think I'm going to engraft. The Bible calls it in the book of Romans. I believe it's chapter 8 or 9, 8, I believe it is. He engrafts. He can come back and he said, well, then now let me put this in there. Now, let me engraft that person back into your life. But right now, I got to move that person from you. All of a sudden, y'all can't see eye to eye. All of a sudden, you go, how can two walk together except they be agreed? They don't mean that God is done with them. Or done with you. But God is like saying for a season. I got to. That, that, ain't, that ain't working. Because see. I'm pruning you. So I got to teach you. How to deal with life without your mama. And without your daddy. And would you serve me. If you didn't have the, the best marriage in town. Would you serve me. If you didn't have the good health that you got. Would you serve me. If everybody wasn't talking about it, What a sweetheart you were. So I got to make it so. That, you know, it's just you. I'm pruning. I prune him out your life. I made him find somebody else. Because I'm concerned about you. Because that was a branch of your life that wasn't bearing no fruit. And you got to learn how to say all things work together. Everything. Stuff I don't believe. If God was on the throne, he would let happen. All things work together for them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And if they don't come back, work on me. Because I'm going to be a better me when God get done with me. And you know, Lord gave it to me like this. There ain't many mothers that had a boy. Or sometimes grandmothers... And you took him to the barber to get that first haircut. <laughs> and that kid sat there and he fought that barber like that barber was trying to put him on the barbecue grill or something. He cried. The barber had to take them big old hands and put it on his head and push his head down just to scrape the back of his neck. <laughs> then he had to grab him in the front and about headlock him to get it all done. And he cried and he cried and he cried. And I've been there. The mother standing there at the barber chair. You know, she just standing right there about two feet from him just watching the whole thing. She crying too. Well, the boy's being pruned. His hair been cut off. And don't nobody want to be pruned. I don't expect you to rejoice over this unless you mature. Because you'll come to understand that God ain't done with me. He got me in. Wait mode because there's something he wants to do in me to bring fruit that ain't coming forth yet. And you won't be like a whole lot of people. They up and jump out of the pot. And try to plant themselves. It, oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing, but I'm going to preach it anyhow. 
if I could get this out of here. They up and jump out of the pot and say, you ain't going to plant me where I don't want to be planted. I don't want to be planted right there. Don't look at me crazy. That's what people say. God be like, no, stop, stay, be still. Let me get these wild ends off you. You know, sometimes you go to Bobby shop, you tell let's hit the wild ends. You know, don't scrape me. Don't make me like Kojak, man. Just hit the wild ends. <laughs> and sometimes God says, just let me prune you right here because you got too much unforgiveness in you. If I get that off you. You'll be no, I don't want to get out of my life. I want to up it out. People get out of marriages because they won't be pruned. They quit jobs. Oh, y'all don't want me to teach you, do you? They quit jobs because they won't. You know, you got too much. You, you know, you talk too much and you're too busy. Uh, just go and do your job. But I, let me see if we can cut that off. I don't want that. I'm going to quit. I'm putting in my resume. Why? He trying to teach you patience. He trying to get the prejudice out of you against them people of another color. So you can think kingdom. Ah, oh, these folk of that color, I can't stand them. And God, oh, I'm quitting. I mean, you, so you want to go where there's nothing but black people. God said, go on over there. But you got to carry your strap to work every week. <laughs> keep, keep your blade sharp. So you <laughs> <laughs> Look what he do now, verse 2. If you ain't bearing fruit, he taketh away. That's a dangerous thing. When you get in the Lord, the Lord starts saying, Now, I'm right now, son. I need you to bear some fruit in that area. You can't keep having a bad attitude, wife, or husband, or children. God said, I need you to bear some fruit in there. Be patient. Be gentle. And it ain't easy for all of us sometimes because we're trying to be me. I need you to be calm. I need you to be kind. I need you to bear some fruit. See? And if you don't, I'm going to take it away. You're not going to get the level of respect, the level of devotion. You ain't going to get it. And you think somebody else is against you, but he's simply saying, no, you need to bear fruit. See? And let me tell you all something. Fruit ain't just being able to speak in tongues. It's the fruit of kindness, fruit of gentleness. And there ain't too many people that can be honest with themselves that I don't need a little more kindness. I don't need a little more patience. Patience is a fruit. I wish I had a church that would make some noise here. Uh, patience is a fruit. Goodness is a fruit. Then he says, uh, he, he purges it that it may bring forth fruit. So he says, in every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it. Now notice, None of us are exempt. The people, who, when we're not bearing fruit, are people that's determined they're not going to bear fruit, and people who are bearing fruit. Even if you're bearing fruit, the husband man see you. I have to go to church. I pray more than anybody. I read my Bible more than anybody. I sing more than anybody. I, I help people more than anybody. And God be like, yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're bearing a lot of fruit, but uh, these branches right here, they got to go. It's not, we can't impress God by the things that we do that we feel they're excellent. You know, I go to church, I beat everybody else. I'm the most holy. I, you know, I don't lie, I don't cheat, I don't lie, I, I, I. And the Lord's like, good, this is a wonderful bread. What, what a wonderful bread. But uh, I know this because I'm the master God. Now I see, still see, uh, this need to be cut off. Because that's what let people like to do. I went to that church. I was the first one. I done this. I, 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 I. <laughs> and when the Lord started pruning them. And he's trying to say, I'm just trying to get it where you burn some more fruit. And I can't do it 
unless I t take something away from you. I don't want all you. I want all Jesus in you. Look at the word. Now are you clean through the word which I've spoken unto you. See, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. You can't bring fruit unless you abide in the Lord. When you are discouraged, God sees that as something that is going to hinder your fruit process. God sees it. And through Christ and the Holy Spirit, they working on you. The Holy Spirit sees everything, knows everything, knows everything. And when we, you surrender to him, he never says, well, I don't love the vine. I love you. You know, you a leaf on the tree. But he simply says, baby, I'm going to make it better for you. And here's the first thing we're going to do. Doctor can't cure cancer letting the cancer stay inside of you. If chemo and radiation don't get it, they say, we got to take the knife now. We got to get it in. We got to cut. But we got to get this out of you. Sometimes trees, they get abscesses. And the Lord, be a good gardener, he gets his spray. And, you know, got to kill the bugs on you. Some of us, we, we got God in our life, but we got bugs on us. Everything bug us. People bug us. People that God love bug us. How you going to be in the ministry? How you going to be a servant of the Lord? And everybody in, on, the, on the world bug you. They, they bug me. There's a bugaboo. Hey, so, so, so bug me. Brothers, don't bug me. Don't bug you. Them people out there can't eat or sleep uh, under the bridge. They bug me. People bug me. I just like to be my bug me. God like said, okay, so I'm going to cut the fruit. I'm going to cut you down. And all he does is get out of the way, and when sickness and poverty hits you, then you, oh, Lord, I do whatever you say, whether I want, I'll live for you. And you better hope that his mercy say, well, I'm going to pick you back up and, and plug you back in. That's why he got angry at Israel, murmured all the time, and God was protecting them. He sheltered them, but every, every time, ah, ah, he ain't enough food, ain't enough, ain't enough lettuce and tomatoes, ain't enough of this or that, I, 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 I ain't got, I'm so sick and tired. I, I. And God said to Moses, let me out of them, I'm going to destroy them. I don't know whoever told you, but God don't like complaining. Now, you can go to God and say, Lord, this is what they saying, this is what's going on. I need your help, and God will hear you. But if you're just walking around all the time, ah, nah, nah, God be like, you know what? I know how to shut you down. I just move away from you. The enemy come in like a flood. That's why you got to learn how to praise him and give thanksgiving to him. I wish he would say amen. He says in verse 5, I'm the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. So how many plant an apple tree and you go out there once a year and get a little naughty apple? Actually, when you plant a peach tree, the first couple years when it's growing peaches, soon as they grow, you're supposed to pluck them off and don't use them. Soon as they start to grow, you pluck them off. Because what you're doing is teaching that tree to grow some big old peaches. You don't want the more hard peaches you can play baseball with and, and, and bat, bat around all day. You know, like Walmart fruit, you know. <laughs> don't y'all sue me either. Fix y'all fruit. <laughs> <laughs> don't sue, don't holler. <laughs> fix your fruit, no hard fruit. <laughs> huh? Well, look at my bag. I think there's a peach in my bag. I brought it for my breakfast. I didn't eat it, but <laughs> y'all been to the all the just the prettiest fruit, man. The red and yellows on them, boy. You be looking at them, you're like, man, that looked like the peach used to grow in my grandma's orchard right there. You buy you about nine of them suckers. You come home, you can bounce them and bounce them and play catch out. <laughs> play, play catch out in the yard. I, right, you know, well, y'all know I'm telling the truth. Well, that's the way some of us are as far as the fruit go. I wish you'd say amen. 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 Yeah, bring me that peach, man. Yeah, bring me that, man. I trust your hands is clean because I'm going to bite into this. I know. Fruit. 
Now, how many times you done bit him some fruit and, oh, Lord, you know, my teeth. <laughs> Then you put it in a brown bag, that old trick, hopefully it's going to mill her up. Man, about a week later, you open it, man, that sucker, you can still <laughs> tell your kids, get a bat. Let's. But you, we're supposed to be so that when people bite into you, <laughs> when, when, <laughs> Fruit need work. <laughs> this this almost bounceable. <laughs> but <laughs> look at somebody and say, you need to work on your fruit. Let the Lord work on your fruit. Can you say amen? He says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, verse 7. Verse 6, though, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. And is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire. And they'll burn. You see all the withered branches? The, the lie the devil has told a lot of people who say they are Christians is that we have to be careful. That withered could be death. None of us can judge. But why is a lot of good people that you, I find no fault with them, they leave in the earth. Heaven don't need none of you. Heaven got oil robbers, Catherine Kuhlman. They got some people. I'm afraid to call some names. They lot still be living. But they got heaven got some good people. They got your grandmother who was a praying woman. They got all that. Why heaven need you? What we would like to say is that God needed them. Some people are being cut off. The Bible says it in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. That some people are cut off. Well, let's go there. Let's go there because y'all may not believe this is in the Bible. Some people don't believe the Bible. They don't believe the preacher. So let's go to the Bible. 1 Corinthians. This is life we live. That's why I thank God every day that I'm on this side. I don't need to come uh, I don't need to come to church to thank him. I thank him. Why? Because at any time you can be cut off. And I know I'm going to a better place than you are too. But you better hope God never sees you as unfruitful. I called you to do ministry and you sitting on your behind just waiting on people. That's what he said to me. That's going to help somebody. Don't get mad at me. I'm just a male man. I'm the same guy to bring you your check on the first. <laughs> so if you, if you kill me now, you, your check ain't going to get there. First, first Corinthians chapter 11. He says uh, in chapter 11, let's go down to verse 24. And uh, he said, uh, he said, uh, stay with me here. He says, and when ye had given thanks, he break it and said, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Now listen, this body is his word. A lot of people, a lot of us are being cut off from blessings because we don't have the word in us. We got a Bible, but we don't spend much time with it, analyzing it because it, the book is spirit. The book is God. Now, if I burnt the dictionary in front of y'all, y'all wouldn't say that. Just say, Pastor didn't need that dictionary. But if I burnt the Bible in here, all of y'all would look, man, he done lost his ever-loving mind. So it ain't just a book. <laughs> if, I, yeah, if I burn a big old atlas or something, y'all say, well, you know, it's a nice fire. Let's get some weenies. But if I burn this and say, go, let's get some weenies, you'll say, I'm not being a part of that. I'm not being a part of that ritual. God ain't going to strike me down. So it must be something to this book. Is that right? We go, we go camping and we run out of wood and we start burning our money and burning our clothes and, and food, uh, but not food, but burning stuff. You ain't got a problem. When I say, reach over there, give me that Bible over there. You be like, well, no, we might like need to die out here, brother preacher. So don't tell me it ain't spirit and in life. Can you say amen? 
Now look at verse 26. He says, for often as you eat this bread, the bread being his word, and I skipped over 25, but you drink this cup, which is being involved, have the spirit fill you. You do show forth, show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unworthily, meaning without, look at verse 28, examine then themselves. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that word and be filled with the spirit. Drink of that cup. Examine. And the way we examine, we say, you know what? I keep bringing forth the fruit of anger when I ought to be bringing forth the fruit of patience and love. Yeah. I, 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 the fruit on my tree is distraction. I'm distracted by everything, 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 everything. I'm examining myself. Well, why can't I be further along than I am right now? Why does certain people come around me, I just get sick to my stomach? I need to examine myself. Why? Because it's about bringing fruit. But look what he says. Uh, in verse 29, he says, For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. In other words, when you sit up on the word like this being taught and then you just go right back out in some stuff, you're eating damnation. There there remains no more repentance for something. See, what you got to understand that as this tree is being watched over by, there's some fruit. He just ain't going to let this tree grow. He just, hey, you ain't growing. You ain't growing blueberries. You a peach tree. I belong to him. He just ain't going to let lust grow on me. I don't care how much it feel good and it's been part of my life. Oh, I got too much for And if you want, I'll 